I don't know how with Christmas staring right down our throats, we have to do start, these other things I've mentioned. I don't know why that wouldn't be reasonable. And as Harry Reid knows, there is more throat staring than actual voting going on right now on Capitol Hill. Uh, yeah, but we may be staring not just Christmas down the throat, but New Year's as well. The Democratic revolt against the tax deal has just gotten a whole lot louder. Top line begins right now. Hello and welcome to ABC News Top Line. I'm Rick Klein. And I'm Jonathan Carl. Every day at noon Eastern, right here, bringing you the latest in politics, everything you need to know. Twitter.com slash Rick Klein, Twitter.com slash John Carl. John, you are where the action is today. There is news to report at this hour, sir. There is. My first top line was salesmen to talk about Joe Biden's efforts to come up here to sell the tax deal. But I would like to revise and extend that, if I can, <laughs> uh, Rick, to rejected. We have just heard from the House Democratic Caucus. They had a closed-door meeting, took a voice vote, and rejected this tax deal, uh, passing a resolution saying that it should not come up for a vote in the House unless it is changed. And the big question for Democrats now is what this caucus vote means. Nancy Pelosi is under no obligation to bring this tax deal up if she and her caucus don't like it. This is part of the negotiating strategy right now, but we could have a serious roadblock to President Obama's much vaunted uh, agreement with Republicans. Next up today, fiscal conservatives, and not how you might typically mean it. News out today that Joe Miller, the Republican candidate for Senate in Alaska, ended the campaign with nearly a million dollars in the bank. A devastating blow to his supporters to know they came with about 10,000 votes short as of the last count. He is still fighting it, John, but you have to think that this money might have come in handy in the race against Lisa Murkowski. Yeah, you know, and, and our, our good friend, good friend of Top Line, Chris Saliza, also points out that Christine O'Donnell had a million dollars in her bank account uh, when her campaign ended. So, you know, both of these candidates, maybe it wouldn't have done much good in Delaware. That race was pretty much a lost <laughs> cause, but certainly could have had an impact uh, up in Alaska. Uh, now, the next up, danger sign. Look at this new poll from Bloomberg uh, asking people, are you better off today than you were when Barack Obama was sworn in? 51% say that they are worse off uh, since Barack Obama became president, only 35% better off. Now, uh, if there is a pony in there somewhere, uh, Rick, I should point out that the numbers on this very same question were actually worse at this point during Reagan's presidency. Well, there you go. But these are still startling numbers as President Obama tries to get his footing back and still say, look, I inherited all these problems. A lot of folks think that things have gotten a lot worse in the last two years. And finally today, speaking of that topic, Jimmy Carter. That is Sarah Palin's description of President Obama in a wide-ranging interview with Time magazine that it made, it made her into the cover girl once again. Sarah Palin says that they, essentially Barack Obama is Jimmy Carter, very beatable, approval ratings very low, very vulnerable. And I love how Sarah Palin still finds time for the MSM. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, but we've got bigger fish to fry up here today. Uh, right now, we are honored to be joined by Oregon Democrat Peter DeFazio. Thanks for, uh, for joining us. This sure. is a, a great time to be talking to you. This was your resolution that just passed. Uh, uh, tell me, what was this vote like? We know it was a voice vote, so we don't know uh, how many yeses and nos, but, but you were in the room. Well, it was uh, nearly unanimous. Uh, now, I would say that a number of Democrats have different reasons for opposing the package, uh, but in the end, uh, virtually everybody... Nearly uh, unanimous. Nearly unanimous, yes. And I, I, in part, it was basically Vice President Biden came yesterday and said, take it or leave it. We just said, leave it. Is, is it binding on the speaker? Uh, it's not officially binding, but when, uh, you know, when 99% of your caucus says uh, we don't want to go forward with this package in this form, uh, you know, I don't think the, you know, in fact, I believe that the speaker uh, is actually strengthened by this, and I don't believe that she is unhappy that we did this. And, and does this mean, to be clear, uh, Mr. DeFazio, that, it, that this package would not come to the House floor? This package, uh, it's, we're in the majority. Uh, and uh, the majority of the current Congress has just said this package is not acceptable to us and, uh, and we've said we don't want it to come to the floor in its current form. We want it renegotiated. We think it's, it's, uh, it's off base. Uh, too expensive, not targeted enough to those in need, not targeted enough to putting people back to work, uh, and uh, we think uh, not well negotiated uh, with, uh, with Mitch McConnell. 
it needs to be a bigger group in the room. Okay, so in its current form, what kind of changes are we talking about? I mean, you know, Harry Reid's trying to get online poker uh, in, 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 in the bill. Is that the no, kind of change that no, would be enough? No. So what, no, what no, one in the, no one in the, no one in, no one in the Democrat caucus of the House mentioned online poker. We're talking about bigger issues. Uh, we're talking about uh, the $68 billion it would cost to give special new tax relief to uh, estates over $10 billion. We're talking about uh, the huge amount of money that would be spent uh, to give people's income over $250,000, the Bush tax rates instead of the Clinton era tax rates when the economy did real well. Uh, you know, we're, a number of people express concern about uh, taking uh, t the FICA tax and diverting it uh, and then borrowing money to refill the Social Security Trust Fund. Is this going to put Social Security more? There were uh, a large number of objections and concerns. Bottom line is we want something that is fiscally responsible, as small as possible, that gives targeted relief and creates jobs. You want we don't fundamental think this, changes. We, we don't think this package does those things. Well, Mr. DePazio, I want you to hear a little bit of this. President Obama made the case again today quite forcefully uh, just this morning for this deal that he negotiated with Republicans. Take a listen to this. As we meet here, there's an important debate I think most of you are aware of uh, on Capitol Hill that will determine in part whether our economy moves forward or backward. Forward or backward is the way that President Obama is pitching this. Then the White House is saying, take it or leave it. Is, are you comfortable with that formulation? If you vote against this, is this vote against moving the economy forward? I mean, come on, look. We did $1.3 trillion of tax cuts between the Bush tax cuts and the stimulus bill. Did that put America back to work? Uh, will more tax cuts and trickle down by showering money on the wealthy, will that put America back to work? That hasn't worked. We think there's a better path to put people back to work, provide targeted relief to people who really need it, working families, low-income families, and the unemployed. I personally believe the Republicans are bluffing on saying they're going to kill off unemployment insurance for millions of Americans just before Christmas. And I would love to have that debate. You sound really irritated with how the White House has handled this. Uh, we think that a, a number of us in the caucus feel that uh, they negotiated away way more than they needed to and didn't go after uh, you know things that we needed more in order to put people back to work. Uh, there was a lot of mention of uh, them walking away from the uh, tax credits and things that provide for the investment in, in, uh, in new energy jobs, for instance. I mean, there's a, a number of real jobs. We're, we're talking about uh, the expensing, which doesn't have a Buy America requirement. So if United Airlines buys an Airbus A380, they get to write it off 100% at great cost uh, to, uh, to debt and to the taxpayers. And how many American jobs did we provide? Uh, so we would like to see Buy America provisions and, and other things in this bill that will know uh, we're getting jobs in America by spending our tax dollars by borrowing money probably from China to do all this. Congressman, as you know, the, the House voted on the tax cuts last week and right. extending them only for those making, uh, couples making less than $250,000 a year. Is right. that enough? I mean, is it, should, should Nancy Pelosi just say, we're done with taxes, no more votes, we can go home for the winter? No, uh, we have empowered, and I was accompanied by our chief negotiator, Chris Van Hollen, to a little uh, press conference after we took this vote, and, and we have empowered him to go back to the table. But this time, at the real table, he was at the table. He thought he was negotiating a bill. Meanwhile, the bill and the deal was being done outside the room, uh, and he only found out about it afterwards. So we really uh, want to be part of this, and we believe we can help push for a better deal for the taxpayers and for families in need and for putting people back to work. Yeah, it seemed like that was all a show. I mean, uh, Van Hollen didn't know about the estate tax uh, uh, deal, didn't know the deal had been finally done, and, and supposedly he was the one in there with, uh, with Geithner and, and Yeah, well, and he was left with the staff while the, while the deal was being cut with McConnell. Uh, but, but, you know, I mean, that's, that's it's, it, look, I mean, we believe that this is inherently defective. It's too expensive. It's putting money in places that won't create jobs, uh, and it's not doing other things that could create jobs, and we want to have further discussion. That's, well, that's all we're saying here. We're just about out of time, but i got to ask you. I mean, do you really think you would get a better deal under the new Congress? I mean, a lot of Republicans would, be, would love to see this uh, uh, get kicked over to January. They've got a you know, majority here. They've got more votes in the Senate. I mean, isn't this going to be your best deal? It's, 
if this is the best deal, the country's in trouble. I don't believe this is the best deal we could get today, and I believe we could get a more fiscally responsible deal that, that provides more jobs. And I think even tomorrow, because how are the Republicans going to pay for it? The next Congress says they're going to pay for things. Where are they going to get an extra $800 billion? Are they going to cancel the Pentagon for the next two years to pay for tax cuts, particularly uh, a couple of hundred billion for uh, the richest among us? Where are they going to get that money if they're going to follow their pay-as-you-go principles? So uh, I don't accept that premise. Uh, and I really don't believe uh, that they that uh, they want to see the tax cuts from the middle class expire because it'll be on their heads. And I certainly don't believe that they want to go home for Christmas giving themselves a $2,000 tax break under this proposal negotiated by McConnell. Every member of Congress gets a $2,000 tax break in this bill. And yet Mitch McConnell will be saying, ah, we can't do unemployment for people. Yeah. Can't do unemployment. Can't afford it. Well. Congressman DeFazio, thank you for joining us here thank right you. after the big, uh, the big vote. We Great. appreciate your time. Thank you. Appreciate the opportunity.